It's really pretty amazing to think that TCP IP, it wasn't always the protocol suite that was dominant. I can remember when I was just starting in information technology in the 80s, the 1980s, and, you know, there was this competition for what would be the main protocol suite that would be used throughout all of computing. TCP IP certainly won the battle, and TCP, the transmission control protocol part of TCP IP, is so popular, as you can tell, it got its... It got its place in the name, but TCP is only part of the story. Notice in this video, we're going to compare transmission control protocol to user datagram protocol. So TCP is not the only option. And obviously it's a great question of what's the difference and why do we even have both? First of all, as far as our OSI model goes, we are talking about the transport layer. Both transmission control protocol and user datagram protocol are options at the transport layer of our technology, of our communications technology here. And transmission control protocol by far is the more popular choice at the transport layer for a protocol. That's why it got itself in the name TCP IP. So what is transmission control protocol all about? Well, it's all about reliable transport. So when we are sending a packet from one machine to another with the mechanisms of TCP, we want to make sure that that packet got there and arrived there safely. So it's reliability. It's what we call connection oriented. A machine will essentially say, I want to talk. The other machine says, okay, I want to listen. And they establish this connection. It's a lot like a phone call. Hi, are you there? Yeah, I sure am. How you doing? I'm doing great. And if someone doesn't talk for a while on that conversation, they'll say, are you still there? And there's these reliability checks in this phone-based conversation that we can consider a connection, much like transmission control protocol. There's flow control mechanisms to make sure we don't overwhelm a receiver. There's retransmissions if a packet gets lost or damaged. Now, all of this great reliability comes with yeah, there's higher overhead. There's more going on here. Transmissions can't be as succinct, as efficient as they could be because of all this reliability. Enter an alternative, the user datagram protocol. This gives us the unreliable transport. They, hey, we're just spitting out packets. Hope you get them. There is no connection made. There is no flow control. There is no concept of a, oh, you didn't get the packet right? Let me retransmit it. And as you might guess, there's very low overhead. So user datagram protocol tends to be used with things like voice over IP. And you might think, well, wait a minute. If I'm sending a voice call over the data network, don't I need a ton of reliability? And sure you do, but other mechanisms are used to provide the reliability not in the underlying protocol itself of like TCP. We don't use the reliability mechanisms of TCP. We use the much more efficient user dat datagram protocol and we bring the reliability in through higher level protocols. So it's very, very clever. Now, this table I cr created for you, this really could be the basis for you making a lot of great flashcards. It is assumed as a CCNA that you know this information. What would use for modern protocols or not so modern protocols in the case of RIP uh, down at the bottom there? But the point is, what protocols are out there? Are they using TCP or UDP? And what specific port number do they use to communicate? A great example here is HTTP, about, oh, just under halfway down. HTTP, which makes the web the wonderful place it is today, uses transmission control protocol and port number 80. And this is like super famous. Now, we don't like to send stuff via plain old HTTP anymore, though. If you go down in the list, you'll see SSL TLS, otherwise known as HTTPS or secure HTTP. And HTTPS, notice, still relies on TCP, but it uses port 443. So that's become like 
much more popular than the old port 80 of the plain old HTTP protocol that doesn't offer the security. Notice stuff that uses UDP is what you would expect, like DHCP right in the middle uses UDP and it's port 67 and 68 in the operation and DHCP is how we automatically give a machine its IP address information and that does need to be super efficient and not have a lot of overhead. So it's no surprise that it calls upon UDP in its operation. Now there is a super fun way that we can verify all this and learn even more about everything that we talk about. And we'll use this tool a lot in these videos together. It's Wireshark. So here I am in Wireshark and you can see that there is a bunch of traffic passing over my Wi-Fi connection on this MacBook Pro. No surprise. If I double click that, it will start capturing the packets that are being sent. And keep in mind, I'm not doing a lot right now. I'm running PowerPoint, I'm running Camtasia, and I'm running Wireshark. That's it. But look at all this traffic. Let me stop the capture and notice if we go under this protocol column right here, it's going to sort for us by protocol. And we can see that, wow, we're sending some UDP traffic. If I double click that entry, I open up a deeper analysis of that packet and we can see that it is user data cram protocol that's being used at the transport layer and it's something in my machine that is sourcing traffic from UDP port 54915 and sending it to destination port 54915. Now you might ask, of course, what is this traffic? Well, it is most definitely something specific to Apple and it's not even really fully published what it is. So this is my MacBook Pro doing some Apple thing. Notice that it is a destination broadcast. So this is a UDP frame that is being broadcast here. And we don't really know what this is. And I didn't think I would know what it is because look at this huge number. When we have port numbers in this large range, then we are dealing with not what are called well-known port numbers. So this is for like the range that different vendors like Apple can use for different functions. But if we come in here and we look at the transmission control protocol packets, we're going to find that there's well-known stuff in here being used. So if we grab this one right here, this TCP packet and take a look at it, notice, aha, this is a source port of 51243, but look where we're going. The destination of 443. Do you remember that one? Yeah, that's the HTTPS. That's our secured protocol. So the contents of this frame are most certainly encrypted because it's being sent over the secure version of HTTP. So notice what a great learning tool Wireshark is for us to really cement our knowledge of this stuff, and we'll be using it quite a bit in these videos.